I'm gonna tell you now, we got a word today now. I, I, I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna say it again. I'm excited. I, I don't know how God's able to do this. I really don't know how God is able to do this, but he loves to download that word into his people. I'm going to say it again. He loved to download that word into his people. And I'm and I'm going to tell you now, I, I come an empty cup before a full fountain. And I say, Lord, fill me up. I'm, re I'm ready to receive because I understand my assignment. I know my assignment. Are you hearing me? And when you know your assignment is to share this gospel, to share this good news, because if you ever needed any good news, you need some good news now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. It has not yet appeared what you shall be. Thank you, Jesus. God is working on you, sister. He working on you, brother, man. Know that the best is yet to come. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep on pressing for the blessing. And I'm here to tell you, you're about to step into your chain. So praise God. Praise God. So please, please, please keep those in prayer. As I said, my niece, uh, Elder Lisa Mayo, also Nay Nay. And also, uh, 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 Deborah Nance, please keep them in your prayers. And, and we're thanking God. And well, one thing I can say, well, Elder Niece Lisa Mayo, this is her birthday. The other two we want to keep in prayer for whatever their sickness or illness is, we're going to believe God for their healing, okay? So God is good. I love you. Thank you so much for everything. And again, uh, I just want to reiterate what I shared about my precious sister Maria Lipsy, in reference to that prophetic word she brought to the line and how God answered that. So if you didn't hear it, play this back, you'll hear it again. Thank you, Jesus. But I thank God for, for, for all of what he's doing and how he's doing it. And understand that, hey, don't limit your, don't place any limitations upon yourself. Know that you are amazing. My sister, you are amazing. My brother, you are amazing. You know, we look to our pastors and these pastors that come to this line are amazing. The ministers, the evangelists are amazing. Matter of fact, just the, 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 the folk that come to this line with no title, they are amazing. You are amazing and you cannot be stopped. The only one that can stop you is you. The devil can't stop you. Now, God can stop you. We know that. But the real deal is, you know, because of the greater power in you, I'm talking about God, because of the greater power in you, you can't be stopped unless you decide to give up, unless you decide to give in, unless you decide to quit. And that's not what this is about. You got to keep on pressing. You got to know that all things are working together for the good in spite of that scripture all things, everything. So I'm not just talking about the good things. I'm talking about the bad stuff too. Everything is working together for the good when God is a part of your life. He can turn your mess ooh, into a blessing. Ooh, Lord Jesus, I'm thanking God for the day. So, oof, saints, I want to start off by letting you know you have to have a made up mind if you hope to make it in this life. You have to have a made up mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? You have to have a made up mind. See, Jesus knew what his assignment was. He came with a made up mind. You have to have a made up mind if you hope to make it in this life. You have to have a made up mind in order to, to keep moving forward, to keep moving forward in life. Because many of us are, are recycling yesterday, the past, the hurt, the pain, the shame, and we can't figure out or, or understand why we're still dealing with the mess, the same old mess we was dealing with last year, the year before last, five years ago, so on and so forth. You got to be able to let that stuff go, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before. I press. You got to press through the doubt, the worry, the fear. You got to let go of any double-mindedness. You got to know that you know that you know. I got a made-up mind, and I'm going all the way with Jesus. Are you hearing me? I have a made-up mind. You have to have a made-up mind and go all the way with Jesus. It's not about you sitting on the sidelines. You're not here to be a spectator. 
You're here to participate in the in the process of building the king God's kingdom. You're in the you're in you're you're here to to build a life for yourself. You're called to be a wise master builder, and the only way you're going to be a wise master builder is when you allow that word of God to to work, and you got to work the word of God in your life. You have to work the word of God in your life if you want to be a wise master builder. Thank you, Jesus. Because many of us know what it is to break down a life, a good life. We might have had it going on, but made one bad choice that took us in a direction or took us to a place where, man, where mm, I wish I didn't do that. But the real deal is you did it. But what you had to do, you had to get yourself up, and then you had to make a decision. I got a made up mind. I'm going all the way with Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. See, because if you continue to sit on the sidelines as a spectator, life is going to pass you by, and you don't have no time to waste. You cannot afford to waste another week, month, year. You cannot afford to waste, and many ooh, that was out there in the world messing up wasted decades. Are you hearing me on, on the product? Wasted decades in the company of the wrong people. Wasted decades looking at pornography. Wasted decades looking at Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. You know, all this crazy stuff that's out there. And we're trying to figure out why we can't sleep at night. Look at what you're feeding yourself. Look at what you're allowing yourself to deposit in your spirit. Oh, if this gospel be hidden, it's hidden from those of us who are lost. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. Now, do you really see? Oh, my God, my God. See, with the help of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, with the help of the Holy Spirit, God will get you to a place that's a whole lot better than what it was. Are you hearing me? See, because God want to bring you into your best life. He want to, he want to, let's say, he want to show you that there's another version. There's another side of you you've never seen before. Are you hearing me? And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you have to be able, you will be able to put a plan together that will open up a window of opportunity leading to change. Oh man, somebody need a change. Somebody need to step into a change. Somebody is tired of being tired. Oh, I'm just tired. I'm tired of dealing with the same old stuff. I'm tired of this uh, uh, Groundhog Day. Every day is like yesterday. And I'm tired. I need a change. I need some. I need to meet some new people. I need to go some new places. I need to change my job. I need to move. I need to this. I need to that. I need to get me a new hairdo. I need to get me a new... And, oh, life is about change. Life is about change. And those opportunities leading to change might not look the way you want it to look. But I'm here to tell you today, you're going to have to trust God. You are going to have to trust God and believe in your heart. See, you got to get this thing down in your heart. Why? Because all things, I'm saying it again, all things are working together for the good when God is on board, when Jesus is on board in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I remember when them disciples going through that storm and they was on that boat out there in the middle of Galilee, Sea of Galilee. And, 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 and that's when they left the dock, it was sunshine. It was nice. They were trying to go over to the other side. And when they got to the middle of the lake, what happened? That, that, that storm arose and the water started uh, taking in, the boat started taking in a whole lot of water. And, and the Bible says that Jesus went into the hinder part of the boat and laid his head down on the pillow, went to sleep while they was going through the storm. And the disciples was tripping out. They were freaking out. They were, oh, Lord, we don't want to die. Somebody go wake up Jesus. Well, I'm here to tell you today, when you got Jesus on board in your life, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to trip. You don't have to slip. You don't have to wonder what's going on because if he's on board in your life, know that all things are going to work together together for the good because he's out for the omega the beginning and the end of everything are you hearing me he can't lie can't die water can't drown and fire can't burn him up time can't wear him out so you just got to know that when he's on board in your life you're going to make it to the other side thank you jesus matter of fact they got jesus got up and then he said to the disciples first he said peace be still and what happened the storm quieted and the waters stopped raging and so on and so forth and then he said to the disciples where's your faith and he's saying to somebody today where is your faith if jesus is on board in your life what are you tripping for 
what are you, what, 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 why are you allowing yourself to do all of these gyrations and all this stuff that you're going through, you know, when, when you have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords operating? He's not in your life to do nothing. He's not just sitting there doing nothing. He working a great work in you. Are you hearing me? He who has begun a good work in you shall perfect you, Lord Jesus, until the day, until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, and that's it. See, and you got to remember now, God says in his word that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As high as the heavens are from the earth, that's how different we are. God, we can never fully comprehend what God is doing, the direction he want to take us in, so on and so forth. And what God does, he does for the, for the greater, for the betterment, first of all, for the kingdom, but also for you. The Bible says he's faithful never to leave you nor forsake you. So he's always present, ever present help, always there in your life. Now, there's going to be times when you're going to feel estranged from him, distant from him. But I'm here to tell you, he's a he's a he's a he's a promise keeper. He's a miracle working God. He does he does all things excellent. Oh, man, I'm telling you now, he don't know how to make a mistake. Now, we have made many a mistake, but we bounce back. Why? Because we got a great God mm, 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 working behind the scenes in our lives. Most of you, most of you, I would, I would dare say, have a whole lot of word in you. You have a whole lot of word in you. Matter of fact, the Bible says we're to speak those things that are not as if they are. And for some reason, you've allowed the enemy to shut your mouth. You've allowed the enemy, to, are you hearing me, to cause you to zip your lip and you're not able to speak life over yourself. And we know as a man, as a woman thinks in their heart, so are they. So not just speak, just zip your mouth, your lips, but he's even corrupted your thoughts. And you're not even able to see yourself as that somebody that is special. That's someone who is amazing. I tell you, you're amazing every day. Not because it sounds good. I'm telling you, you're amazing because you are amazing. You got to be able to believe in yourself. Don't just believe in God. Believe also in yourself. And look here, let's not pass over Jesus. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Believe in the Holy Spirit. Believe in God's word. Matter of fact, he says in Exodus 23 and 20, I give my angels charge over you. Are you hearing me? You have an angel to keep watch over you. Thank you, Jesus. And matter of fact, the day you came onto the planet and the day you leave, you're never protected. You're never uncovered. God is going to keep you. He's going to bless you. You need to be able to, you need to be telling the devil, move over, devil. Get out, get out of my way. Uh-uh-uh. You're not hanging out with me no more. Get up out of my mind. Get out of my family. Get out of my household. Get out of my car. Get out of my, my finances. You just got to be able to speak those things that are not as if they are. And with a made up mind, you, hey, look here. Hey, I, hey, look here. You need to tell the I'm going all the way with Jesus. Are you hearing me? Devil, get out of the way. I'm going all the way with Jesus. Are you hearing me? I got to not just tell the devil that. You got to also be able to tell that to yourself. I got to be able to speak to myself. That's right. Because look here. People come into to your life and people go, but you could never separate yourself from yourself. Are you hearing me? Unless you want a drug or something like that. Are you hearing me? And then there's another spirit operating inside you. But I'm thanking God for Jesus. Why? Because who he who has begun a good work in you, he who has begun a good work in us shall perform it, shall perfect. And I'm here to tell you, you are new and improved in a special edition. No longer will you fall back into the mm, 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 into the crazy, into the silly, into the nasty. Uh -uh, I ain't going there no more. Been there, done that. I got the t-shirt. I can play the DVD over and over again. I'm not doing that no more. Uh-uh. Why? Because I've been delivered and I've been set free. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, what a mighty God I'm ser I serve. And that's what this is about. You got to know you serve an awesome wonder working, miracle working God that can do anything but fail. And he's not about to fail you, my sister. 
Uh, he's not about to fail you, my brother. God's got you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh, my God, my God. You got to make up your mind. I'm going forward, and I won't be stopped. I can't be stopped. I can. I will. I must. I got to do this. I, I got to do this. I got to keep on pressing for the blessing. That woman with the issue of blood, she had to press her way for her healing. She had to press through the crowd. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, you got to press through some stuff if you want to make it with Jesus. Are you hearing me? Matter of fact, Philippians 2 and 2 says, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Thank you, Jesus. Those prayer requests that we have came from people who were interested in the, in the condition and in the affairs of others. And we just can't focus on ourselves and, and try to, you know, try to try to do me. It's not about me, it's about us, because us can get can accomplish more than me by myself. And this is why collectively and corporately, we have to be able to come together, unite in prayer. Matter of fact, the Bible says where two or more gather together, there the Lord Jesus is in our midst. One can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 devils and demons and imps to flight. Are you hearing me? Let each of you look out not only for your own interests or for yourself, but also for the interests of others. And then the fifth verse says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That's it. You got. You have to be able to get the mind of Christ. And as I said in my opening, he had a made up mind. My brother, my sister, you're going to have to have a made up mind. Look here, Paul says in Philippians 3 and 12, not that I have already attained or am already perfect. Mm -mm, mm -mm. In other words, you have not yet arrived, my sister. You have not yet arrived, my brother. You got to keep on keeping on. You got to keep on pressing. But look what Paul says. But I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Man, oh man, oh man. There's a high calling mm, 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 on your life. God, has, you, you're not an accident. You're not a mistake. But look here, there's a reward for the pressing. See, there's a prize. There's a reward for the pressing. You got to be able to press through the doubt. You got to let go of all that stinking thing and all that negativity, forgetting those things which are behind. And your future is calling you by name. Come forth, my brother. Come forth, my sister. Oh my God, what a mighty God. God want to put a wow in your mouth. Uh, he want to take, he want to dry up those tears. Uh, he want to take the hurt out of your heart. He want to let you know the best is still yet to come. Oh, thank I don't know who God is speaking to right now, but he wants you to know the best is yet to come, but you got to be able this one thing you have to do, forgetting those things which are behind. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go and reach forth under those amazing good things that God has already prepared for those of us who love him. God loves you, my sister. God loves you, my brother. And I'm here to tell you, boy, I, I, I like going to a smorgasbord because you go to a smorgasbord, they got everything laid out on the table. All you got to do is just go reach out and take and this and that and that and this and fill yourself up. I want to fill myself up on that word. There's something about that word of God that's able to make a brother, able to make a sister. I mean, feel real good on the inside. Oh, my God, my God. Uh, I don't need you to scratch my back. Uh-uh. I need you to drop a word in my spirit. And that's what this is about. Romans 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, I feel good this morning. By the renewing of your mind, you got to, hey, you, what's going to change you? Your mind. You got to change your mind in order to change your direction, in order to change the perception of how you see 
yourself. Yes, things might not, body parts might not be working the way you want it to work. But that doesn't diminish, that doesn't take away the man, the woman that you are on the inside. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are amazing. My God, my God, there's not another man, another woman on the planet like you, never was, never will be. But God want to try to up your game. He want to he wanna bring forth a, a, another version of you that the world have not seen. That matter of fact, not just the world, but you haven't seen. You are amazing. You are amazing. I have not seen, nor he have heard, neither have entered into the hearts of anyone, man, woman, the things that God has prepared, something that is prepared is already set up. For those of us who love him, you have a love for God. God got something laid up for you, sitting up for you, that's going to bless you real good. And he don't bless you to bless you. He bless you so you can be a blessing to others. Thank you, Jesus. Take the focus off yourself and put your focus on others. And, let, and watch God move. Watch God work behind the scenes. Watch God bless you real good. So let me go back to that verse there, Romans 12 and 2, and it says, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable. What is that good and acceptable? Acceptable. There's some things you might be doing that is not acceptable to God. You need to know what is good and what is acceptable to God. And those things that are not good and not acceptable to God, you got to let it go. People, places, and things, whatever, you got to know. You got to be able to read the writing on the wall. You got to be able to, 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 to know and understand what is what your, what your walk is, what you're living out in your life each and every day. The perfect will of God. You want to be in the perfect will of God. You know, there was a movie, a uh, little Bow Wow, a little Bow Wow wanted to be like Mike. That movie, I Want to Be Like Mike. Lil Bow Wow said he wanted to be like Michael Jordan. Well, you know, as a Christian, all of us should be striving to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. There's not a man or woman on the planet I want to be like. Uh-uh. I'm I realize God trying to bring me into being my best, the best version of myself. And that's what this is about. See, and the Lord will keep, the Lord will keep the believer in perfect peace, in perfect peace when their mind is stayed on him. Are you hearing me? The Lord will keep you in perfect peace if you can keep your mind stayed on him. And matter of fact, Isaiah 26 and 4 says, trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Everlasting strength. See, the enemy's goal is to win the fight for your soul. He's after your soul. What do a prophet, a man, a woman, to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Are you hearing me? See, so the enemy want to win the fight for your soul and he will do whatever it is he need to do by any means necessary. He want to plant seeds of doubt, seeds of worry, seeds of fear. Where? Where do you want to plant it? In your mind. In your mind. And this is why you have to be able to guard your heart, your mind. You have to be able to guard your spirit. Are you hearing me? You just can't be walking around like a loose jacket, loose scarf or something like that. Uh-uh. You got to sarge your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You got to put on the whole armor of God, as Paul would say. Matter of fact, Ephesians 4 and 27 says, neither give place to the devil. Are you hearing me? Give no place to the devil. So what, 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 what are you letting the devil get away with? You, what are you allowing the devil to get away with? You got to let the devil, you got to put the devil, up. not today, devil, uh-uh. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil change your mind. My God, this is the day that the Lord have made. I, if you want to rejoice and be glad, you got to go with Jesus. You have to go with Jesus. Because we understand as a man, as a woman thinks in their heart, so are they. See, your thoughts will always precede your actions. Are you hearing me? Your thoughts will always precede your actions. So it is very important that you understand that you have to do what you need to do in order to bring about God's will, God's purpose for your life. That's it. Why? Because the heart is the seat of your emotions. The heart is the seat of your emotions. Oh, Lord Jesus. First Peter 1 and 13 says this. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. 
and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, somebody might need a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Those of you who know him, mm -mm. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I mean, whew, that's it. That's, you got to love this man named Jesus who suffered, bled, and died for you. My God, my God, making it possible for you to raise your family mm -hmm. in an atmosphere of peace, joy, love, my God, happiness, giving your children an expectation of great things to come, laying down a pattern, a model, or whatever. Oh, showing them how to walk with Jesus and how to talk with him and so on and so forth. I, I won't be like Mike. I won't be like Jesus. Uh, -uh that's it. Matter of fact, 1 Peter 1 and 14 says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance, but as he who have called you is holy, so you be holy in all manner of conversation. Now, when we talk about conversation, we're talking about lifestyle and all manner of lifestyle, not just in, in speech and how you conduct yourself. You know, you don't have to walk around like, the, you know, I, I, I was I was uh, went to the store yesterday, went over to Home Depot yesterday and uh, there was a young man coming out of the store. He's holding up. He holding up his pants with his hand and all he got to do is put a belt on. You see his underwear. I mean, what's up with that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, what? I mean, we as a people, what? What, what is? Go I mean, we want to identify with the wrong people. We are in the world, saints. You are in the world, but you don't have to walk like, talk like, look like, dress like, act like, behave like in, the people of the world. Why? Because if this gospel be hidden, it's hidden from those of us who are lost. I'm, I had to pray for that young man. I prayed for him that the Lord would help him to see, you know, that there's an easier way to keep his pants up. He didn't got to hold it with his hand. He got one hand holding the bag of stuff he came out of the store with, and the other hand he holding his pants up. Something you shouldn't have left the house like that. You and he's a grown man, so it's not like he's under. It's not like he's with his mama or something like that. A kid. And mama, mama should be, son, you ain't leaving the house like that now. Uh-uh. See, but when you have a grown man, a grown behind man walking out of the house with his pants hanging down, I mean, up underneath his buttocks, something wrong with that. And he tried, oh, Lord Jesus, help, Lord, help a brother, help a brother. Are you hearing me? And you women don't have to show all your goods either. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? See, understand, my God, you are amazing. And what makes you amazing is the fact and the reality that you know who you are in Christ. That's it. That's it. You know, if, you know when, 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 when you separate the mind from the body, there, there's no movement. There's no mobility. Are you, you know, there's no mobility. And, and, and this is what the enemy want to do. He want to separate your mind from, you know, from, from your body. He want to separate your mind from Jesus, from the word. This is why he want to continue to harass, continue to fill your mind. Because if what he fills your mind with, he's hoping he can get it down into your heart. Because whatever's in your mind is going to eventually make its way down into your heart. And then the Bible says, out of the heart comes the issues of life. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. So the enemy, one of the tricks of the enemy is to place fear, worry, and negative stuff. Where? In your heart in your heart and god says he has god god have not given you a spirit of fear god have not given you a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind jesus see and that's it saints you have to be able to maintain a sound mind thank you jesus uh, oh my god but if you maintain a sound mind, fear won't take place. You won't give place to fear. And guess what? You'll be able to operate in the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. And you'll be able to release his love, his love over your family and loved ones. Thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, I want to read something that Paul sent to the church, Paul's message to the church in the body of Christ. And I'm going to read it to you from the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. In Philippians 2 and 2, Philippians 2 and 2, Revised Standard Version of the Bible says, 
complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind, do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. I wanted to read this new translation, this other translation, I should say, a revised standard version of that Philippians 2 and 2. Because Lord wants to complete, he wants, he wants to complete your joy in him. Are you hearing me? And this is why he says in John 10 and 10, he's come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. So we have to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that's it, saints. That's it. Philippians 4 and 7 says, in the peace of God. Mm, mm, mm. I wonder how many of us need the peace of God this morning. Mm, mm, mm. Need the peace of God last night when I laid down. I wasn't able to sleep last night. Oh, I'm tossing and turning, waking up in the middle of the night. And I'm dealing with this, dealing with that. Oh, I got strife in my life. I got this going on, got that going on. Well, God says he wants to get this, 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 this. He wants you to have his peace. We're talking about a peace that surpasses all understanding. And that peace shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So you have to maintain a relationship with this man named Jesus. I'm talking about that man who's often imitated but never duplicated. He is God all by himself. Thank you, Jesus and know he loves you, but you're going to have to have a made up mind if you're going to, you know, if you hope to have a, a blessed and prosperous future, you're going to have to have a made up mind if you're going to be able, if you want to, I should say, leave the hurtful, painful, shameful past in the past. Let it go, my sister. Let it go, my brother. Know the best is yet to come. Don't give up on God. Never give up on God. Never give up on yourself. And, and look here. Don't stop daydreaming. Don't stop daydreaming. Don't abort the promise or abandon the dream. Are you hearing me? Hey, if you can keep on pressing for the blessing, God will show you that your Redeemer will live. Uh, I'm, your, your Redeemer, he lives. And because he lives, you too will live and not die. And you will one day declare the works of the Lord. I can only hope and pray that today is the day that you declare the works of the Lord in your life. And you can do that when you are operating in a made up mind, a made up mind. Thank you, Jesus. Dear God, dear Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you once again, Father God, for the leading of your spirit. Thank you, God, for just speaking to us today, Lord God, to remind us of the importance, Lord God, of keeping our minds stayed on you. And I'm thanking you today, Father God, because I recognize and realize that it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by your spirit. And I'm thanking you for your spirit that is ooh, actively moving in and through our lives today, Lord God. Bless your people, Father God. Bless your people to know you. Bless your people to love you. Bless your people, Father God, to be able, Lord God, to maintain a lifestyle in a, ooh, Lord Jesus, in an agenda that would promote the gospel. And Lord, I'm thanking you for the privilege and the honor given me, Lord God, the, the, uh, the, 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 the call that you placed on my life. But I want to especially thank you for every man, every woman, every family, oh God, every church, every pastor, every leader, every individual, Lord God, that is actively partaking in this line. I pray even now for the YouTube channel. I pray, Father, you will continue, Lord God, to, to be with those, Lord God, in Manchester, United Kingdom, uh, oh, Cunningham, England, Father God, uh, oh, God, in South Africa, Lord God, I thank you, Jesus. Uh, I thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord God, penetrating our hearts, Lord God, and changing our minds. I'm thanking you, God, for your faithfulness, Lord God, never to leave us nor forsake us. So, Lord God, I just want to say thank you today. 
for all of what you've done, all of what you're doing and will continue to do in all of our lives. And I ask this prayer to be answered in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord. If you're viewing this on social media, I pray that, you know, if this message has been a blessing to you, that you would share this word with someone because you're not the only one that needs a made up mind. You might have a family member, you might have a friend, a loved one, whatever, that might need a made up mind. And I believe that this message can help them much like it's helping you. So please share this on your, on your, on your social media site. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this message, please give me a thumbs up, a like, and, and let's keep on keeping on. Let's keep doing what we're doing together. Let's grow together in Christ. I love you now. Come on back tomorrow, same time, same place, in the same station. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.